G'day ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Second Chance Cinema. We are so glad to be back and we hope you missed us because we are really excited to bring you our second season. God, why are you always so fucking happy and cheery? The world is fucking horrible, Ben. Nothing is fucking good anymore. Why do we even fucking... What is the point anymore? You know, nothing just... Nothing makes sense anymore. And it's all shit. And nothing's right. And everyone sucks. And all I want is goddamn pancakes! Is this all because we're doing the Fantastic Four? Yes! G'day, ladies and gentlemen. We are Callum... And Ben. ...from Advocates Productions. And welcome to the Second Chance Cinema. Here at the Second Chance Cinema, we love nothing more than to give movies with a bad reputation one final opportunity to bask in cinematic greatness. If a film succeeds, we'll place it on the shelf of redemption so that people can finally recognise its true quality. If a film fails, we will send it back through the portal to movie hell, never to be seen again. Grab some snacks, sit down and get comfortable. The show is about to begin. Released in 2015 to one of the most intense bashings of recent times from critics and audiences, Fantastic Four, or Fan Four Stick as it was stupidly put all over the posters, is considered a low point in the careers of almost everyone involved. This complete and utter bomb of a film allegedly got director-writer Josh Trank fired from helming Rogue One. The film boasts an impressive cast, starring Miles Teller, Kate Mara, Michael B. Jordan, Jamie Bell, Toby Kebbell and many more. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film sits at just a 9% critic score and an 18% audience score. On IMDb, the film has a score of 4.3 and on Metacritic it boasts a critic score of 27 out of 100 and a user score of 2.6. Sheesh, that's harsh. Trang sent in our infamous tweet just prior to the film's release, stating, A year ago I had a fantastic version of this and it would have received great reviews. You'll probably never see it. That's reality. So if the maker of this film claims that there was a great version of this at some point in time, maybe we should take a look at what's there and see if the film's sheer awfulness was just blown out of proportion and there is some merit to this film. Shall we get into it? Do we even have a choice? No. This is Fant Forstick. So we open in the past with a young Reed Richards in class and... I want to be the first person in human history to teleport himself. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did they drag you into the stand? Have you no shame? <laughs> so young Reed talks about how he wants to be the first man to teleport himself and the class makes fun of him for it. Right off the bat, the kid playing Reed is a horrible actor. Even if you could build a thing, which you can't. I've already built it. Well, I'm building it in my garage. Is it next to your flying car? <laughs> Why are they laughing at me? I'm saying really interesting stuff. They should be amazed. Maybe it's because you're talking in a tone of voice that makes like you just learned how to speak words. After this, we see a young Ben Grimm at his home in a scrapyard because, ooh, look, he's poor. Be sad for him, audience. Sympathize. He has a brief argument with his brother and then... What'd you say? Clobbering sound. Clobbering sound. I can't fucking do it. I can't do it. Ben goes to check out a disturbance and finds Reed, who's looking for a part for his teleporter. The two of them go back to Reed's garage so that Reed can show him how the machine works. Don't blow up. Don't blow up. 12 seconds later. And yes, it actually does work. A child. Built this shit. Do you want to know what I was doing at his age, Ben? I was watching Dragon Ball Z and eating the teller straight from the jar. Damn right you were. So anyway, we cut to seven years later, where we see Reed and Ben at a science fair showing off their invention. Model car, please. Model, the model car, please, Ben. I don't have a model car. Why don't you have the model car? The car. I'm 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 plan. Mr. Richards. Okay, I will use this model plane. Hey, I just need to use this for uh, one second, but I'll get it back, I promise, thanks. I'm sorry, are we supposed to root for this guy? He seemed kind of like a dick. You're a dick. Okay, at least the movie agrees. So of course the machine works, well, mostly. <laughs> oh. 
Then they're approached by Sue Storm and her father Franklin from the Baxter Corporation, and they offer Reed a full scholarship on the spot. Why a top scientist at a high school science fair? What are they expecting to find? The next breakthrough technology in baking soda volcanoes? So Reed goes to the school and approaches Sue in the library. They start- Dude, don't even bother. Nothing happens for the next, like, half an hour. So you know what that means, right? RAPID FIRE DROP POINTS! So and Reed talk in the library. Franklin tries to convince the board to let the kids stay. Franklin convinces Victor Von Doom to come back to the project that he started in the first place. Victor is a douche, but he and the rest of the team eventually get along. We're introduced to John Storm, who gets in a drag race and smashes his car, then needs to work with the Baxter Corporation to afford to repair it. There is a giant fucking montage of the team building the teleporter, and the board comes to tell them the NASA people are going on a trip despite promising the scientists that they can go. They get drunk and decide to go anyway. Reed calls Ben to make him come as well, and now we're in another dimension with Sue in control back on Earth. Fucking hell! Was there seriously nothing interesting that happened in that entire time? Yeah. Seriously. This is just gonna get worse, isn't it? Yep. So Reed, Johnny, Ben and Victor all start exploring the new dimensions until they find a pit of green goo, which is the planet's energy source. Victor, being a cockhead, decides to touch it and the whole planet starts blowing up around them. Can I just mention that this CGI looks like a bad PS3 game? Seriously, when did I start playing Mass Effect 3? So Victor Force was presumed death and the rest of the team try to escape. While doing so, Ben is crushed by rocks, Johnny is set on fire, and something probably happens to Reed too, I don't know. They all manage to get back to Earth, but not without consequences. The four, yes, including Sue, are all horribly injured and given strange abilities by the other dimension's energy. Okay, hold on, hold on. Ben was crushed by rocks, so him becoming the rock monster makes sense. Johnny was set on fire, so him getting fire powers makes sense. But what the fuck gave Reed his stretchy powers, or Sue her invisibility slash force field powers? I swear to god, only half of this movie makes any logical sense. Yeah, there are a few questionable moments and a lot of gaps in logic. It's hard to believe there was ever a good idea for this film. It's almost as if Trank was just trying to shift blame to the studio. If you read up on all the shit that went on behind the scenes of this movie, I'd be shifting the blame as well. It's obvious that there were intense reshoots that the director just didn't want to happen. In the next scene, the gang are being held at Area 57. 57? Could you not get the rights to 51 or something? Is 57 just the place where they send all the dumb interns that couldn't get into Area 51? April 9th, 2016. Time of recording, 4.21 p.m. I'm about to perform an extremely dangerous autopsy on the unknown alien life form that NASA were discovered last month. This is extremely, uh, extremely dangerous, as I said, and it is crucial that nobody contaminates the area or um, witnesses what I'm about to do because we cannot run the risk of the air becoming contaminated. Ooh. Just a moment. Pizza for Sean. Yeah, here we go. Uh, that, that's not enough. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you the rest of the next time. Bye. Bye. Okay. Let's. So the gang discovers they've been given strange abilities, and when Reed escapes captivity and sees what's happened to the others, he immediately blames himself and runs off. We cut to a year later where we see that the government has been using the group's powers for military purposes and that they're planning to weaponize the energy from the other dimension to give other soldiers these powers as well. Let me guess, this plot point goes nowhere. Correct Mundo, Ben! In the next scene, Franklin convinces Sue to help track down Reed, and eventually she finds him, and the military, along with Ben, attempt to take him back into captivity. Reed fights them off for a while. Get down! On the ground! But he's no match for the power of the worst headbutt in cinematic history. Let me explain. Why? I'm no good to you, to anyone. This is all my fault. That we can agree on. That we can agree on. Oh, 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 oh,
okay. I don't know. I don't know whether it's the lack of a big sound effect or the lack of motion from Ben or the way that Miles Teller just flops onto the ground, but the whole thing is just hilariously awful. Anyway, so Sue convinces Reed to help rebuild the teleporter thingy, and of course it's finished within two minutes of screen time. The team that heads to the other dimension finds Victor and brings him back to Earth. Once he's back on Earth, Victor fucks shit up. Kills Franklin. Humanity had its chance. And heads back to the other dimension to carry out his plan to destroy Earth. I just want to point out that in this 96 minute film, it has taken 71 minutes to introduce the villain. I mean, we saw Victor earlier on, but he was never established as the villain. He was just a bit of a dick. It's almost as if the writers of this film just assume that everyone watching it knows that Doctor Doom is the main villain of the Fantastic Four series without setting him up at all. We fully support not treating audiences like idiots, but come on, you have to give newcomers to the series some form of setup. They've just seen this guy Victor walk in, die, and now he's back trying to kill the Earth. The movie's almost over, and you've only just introduced the main threat. What the fuck? So of course the gang all head back into the other dimension after Doom to try and foil his diabolical scheme. What did this horrible, evil scheme involve? Of, of course. course! What is it with villains using sky lasers in big blockbuster movies these days? If you're watching this thinking, wait, that can't be true, that's not a thing, just look at all of these examples. All big, all lasers or beams, all shooting into the sky. I mean, I know it is mainstream Hollywood, but come on guys and girls, use some creativity! So they have a big, boring CGI fight that's not worth talking about, and the group defeats Doom, hooray, yippee, putting a stop to his evil plan. But not before one of the most cringeworthy lines I've ever heard in a film. Victor, don't do this! There is no Victor. There is only Doom. I can't take this shit anymore. I can't! So of course the group gets their own facility to work in and everyone's happy. And then we see the final scene of the movie. I think that the four of us should have a name. Why would we need a name? Because we're a team now and there's four of us. So we should come up with a name for it. No. Uh -uh. Like the human torch and the torchettes. Ugh. No. Are you kidding me? <laughs> don't do it. Don't. Please don't. How about the big brain and his neurons? How about the big brain and her neurons? How about two guys, a girl, and the thing that nobody wanted? Are you serious? Oh my god, they're gonna do it. <laughs> Come a long way since the garage. Gotta say, it's fantastic. Say that again? It's fantastic. Yes, it is. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Please don't do it. Guys, I got it. Ready? Yeah. Motherfuck! Kaboom! Blam! Oh, excuse me again, dear. Alright guys, so it's time for the final verdict, and we like to be positive here on this show, so we'll start with the pros first. Um, whoever the casting director was on this film, we'll flash the name right now. You did a good job, you got some good actors together, and yeah, it's a, it's a good cast on paper. Yeah, everyone in this film has done many great movies beforehand and has proven their worth as an actor. But that's where we're going to have to end the pros. <laughs> because yeah. all these actors gave such a below average performance. Yeah, it's a... They basically got given a script and the actors turned around and said, fuck it, let's sleep. Let's sleep, yeah. Everyone just seems so bored and just like going through the motions in this one. We'll show a few clips right now. Did you really build this in your garage? Mm-hmm. Now this is elegant. Music is just a series of altered patterns. The musician creates the pattern and makes us anticipate the resolution and holds back, makes you wait for it. There's patterns in everything and everyone. That place kept me alive, gave me strength, power. What kind of power? You can see that, um, yeah, if you obviously you saw those clips and just everyone's just so, you know, just speaking with a, not much passion or interest in what they're working on. It's just, uh, it doesn't, it really doesn't help the viewer when the actors in the movies are also bored. So 
Yeah. Doesn't go well. <laughs> Doesn't go right. well. Moving on to the next one. Uh, so you probably would have seen in the clips that we have showed throughout the scripted part. You might have noticed. The yeah. reshoots are incredibly obvious. And you know how you can tell what's a reshoot and what's not? When Kate Mara's got real hair and when she's got fake hair. Um, here's a comparison right now. It just, it fluctuates all throughout the movie. And it, it real can hair. be within the one scene. It can go from real to fake back to real yeah. within the course of a minute. It's not like a in one half of the movie she's got real hair and the other half it's fake or one scene it's real and one scene it's fake. It's completely all over the place. I have yeah. a feeling 95% of the film was reshot. It seems like it, doesn't it? It seems like it. But yeah, it's just... I, I, don't, bl I don't blame the director. I think of... I feel like Josh Trank finished the movie and then the studios were like, yeah, nah, they were changing this. We're changing half this damn movie. Or like they cut a lot of stuff or something happened, but it was obviously enough to garner reshooting half the damn movie. Anyway, that's just bad. That's just mm, not good. <laughs> so we'll move on right now. Um, CGI. Ugh. Like we said in the uh, in the scripted portion of the show, it looks like a bad PS3 game, and that's not something you want with $120 million to make the damn movie. Looks like $20. <laughs> yeah, it's about that's about right. That's really all we got to say there. This, I just want to quickly add, it is incredibly hard to watch this movie because of the boring actors, and then in spots where it should be interesting, you get completely put off by weird face more thing crap and rock monsters that look like I don't know fucking third gen Pokemon it's just ridiculous oh, it's not it's not great um yeah but next we've got our extremely cheesy moments that are just so distracting and like they're you know we don't hate we like a bit of cheese with our movies a little bit of cheese on the side a little cheese on top whatever but um it, when it's treated like the the best way to do cheesy I think is to just kind of make fun of it and like just lean into the stereotype or the trope you're going with but they treat these cheesy moments and lines and stuff with complete seriousness like that uh von doom line the there is no victor there is only doom line they treat that like a major moment whereas that would just be a joke in like a better movie and even if you look back at the original Fantastic Four movies, if you have seen them, obviously Donnie Storm still uses his catchphrase flame on when he turns into the human torch because that's how his powers work. In this, it's a button. Yeah. <laughs> and he has Shut to warn... <laughs> this and a he has his, to warn people suit. when he's yeah. using it. So he says flame on as a warning. What the fuck? All right, we're going to move on. Yeah, so we got the last point here. Um, oh my god, we mentioned it a little bit before, but it's so boring. This we movie... literally... Sorry. No, it's alright. I've been talking. Yeah, about okay. It. Um, I was just going to say, this movie is 96 minutes long, and 96 minutes when it is boring is four hours. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. In preparation for doing this, we obviously watch the film, and that's what we do. I fell asleep after this movie. Yeah, yeah. It actually, was yeah. like four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. And that actually did happen um, and you know we said we literally skipped about half an hour of this in that uh, rapid fire section because it was there was nothing happening absolutely nothing there's nothing talking. interesting if we went on about what happens obviously we're going to go for an extra 10 minutes in the episode and people are going to be like why the fuck do we care about this because so nothing boring. happens yeah you'd be bored about us talking about a boring movie and being bored by the boring movie and then they, they, you'd just be bored everyone's be bored and you shit Okay, so obviously it is now time to figure out whether the movie failed or failed. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it's bad. Oh, it's horrible. It's bad. Um, you know, usually we have a, a little bit more of the trailer and just summing up why it's bad, but I think you can see it for yourself, really. You don't, you don't need us to rehash everything because we'd literally be saying what we just said in the final verdict. There's nothing else to talk about with the film. It is just bad. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's not, it's, don't watch it. Um, so usually now we do the rock, paper, scissors, but uh, we've decided we, we want to do a bit of a teamwork thing here because we have a special surprise for this movie. We're going to use our Fantastic Four powers to destroy this movie as much as we can. Get excited.
All right, so that's going to do it for our return episode of Second Chance Cinema. We really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we enjoyed making it as we always do, and we're really excited to be back. Like we said, we've got some great episodes coming for you in the next uh, in the next year or so. You know, for this. Uh, for this year, for 2018, so look forward to it. We're going to be growing, hopefully, in subscribers and in, <laughs> and in quality. Um, yeah, so we're just we're just going with emotions. We're having fun, and the people who are watching, thank you. Anyway, I'm rambling. <laughs> You're rambling, and I'm just going to give my quick little sentiment. Obviously, this is our first episode of the show back. We have uploaded other stuff, but knowing you guys are watching again on a series that we love making really does mean a lot to us. So once again, thank you so much, whether you're watching for the first time or you're a recurring viewer thank you so much yeah so uh we'll give you the usual spiel like the video uh share it with your friends and everyone you know that do the comments your life. let yeah. us know what you yeah. thought tell us if we're wrong tell us if you loved this movie because if you did what's wrong with you yeah <laughs> i worry um yeah and obviously do the subscribing uh, and all that jazz so i think we're good yeah. to end it right now so yeah we'll see you next time guys enjoy your day bye